thank you, Madam President, for joining us this morning and, like others, to acknowledge the positive comments regarding maintaining expansionary policy. And as has already been stated, we know that uh, inflation is tracking upwards. However, with that expectation that it would slow down, but it appears that we have entered a, a, a new set of conditions. And firstly, all of us hope that the worst of the pandemic uh, is behind us, <coughs> or is nearly behind us. So, in my opinion, it's imperative that the ECB doesn't become a factor in compounding the new problems facing us. And what I mean by that is uh, a narrow interpretation of the uh, ECB's primary mandate of inflation control implemented without any regard to its broader secondary mandate could create a vicious circle of higher borrowing costs at a time when countries need to invest and catch up, not at least to tackle the climate emergency. Uh, this secondary mandate, as we know, compels the ECB to support general economic policies in the Union. Uh, and as your, as, uh, your board member, Frank uh, Elderson, stated, uh, this mandate stipulates uh, a duty, not an option. So what assurances can we have that the ECB will continue to play a positive role in aiding the recovery uh, and that it won't hide behind inflationary pressure as a rationale to revert to the old ways of thinking uh, which hurt us so badly during the last uh, recession of austerity. And, and finally, on that note, Madam President, uh, has the ECB accepted that the Troika's approach of imposing austerity on countries following the financial crash was the wrong thing to do, given how during this recession uh, we've seen that accommodative policies and increased spending at EU and national level to protect the vulnerable have prevented as much hardship. So could it now be understood maybe that the Troika approach was, uh, was wrong? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mc McManus. Um, you know, the, the ECB's supporting role as, as foreseen in the treaty does not mandate it to support the objectives of the Union directly but indirectly by supporting general economic policies put in place by the EU institutions to serve these objectives. Um, you know, in our interpretation, we strongly and consistently emphasize that the ECB can only act upon its secondary objectives if this does not prejudice or conflict with the objective of price stability. So you borrowed a page from um, my colleagues uh, and friend Frank Ellison, who says that it's, it's mandatory, it's not optional. But obviously, and he's too fine a lawyer to uh, have forgotten about that, obviously with the, uh, this caveat that I have just mentioned, which is that uh, we can act upon the secondary objective if it does not prejudice or conflict with the primary objective of price stability. So, any, any, any measure, any assessment uh, will actually determine first of all and for, first and foremost whether the objective of price stability is, is met. Uh, and, and then, provided that the answer to that first question is yes, then of the various options available, we'll actually use the secondary objective to possibly uh, may, make, make a choice. But that's just to re-emphasize the fact that the primary objective is the one that drives uh, our direction and, and, our, and our policies going forward. Not to say that the secondary objectives do not matter, but they only matter to the extent that the first is not prejudiced. I'm, I'm sure you, you're familiar with that, but I thought it was helpful to just remind ourselves of, of, of that. So as part of the secondary uh, objectives, we obviously have the, uh, the economic uh, development. Uh, we have the... Uh, the, the the fight against, well, the, the respect of the environment and the fight against climate change and so on and so forth. And clearly those have to be taken into account, particularly if those secondary objectives are stated very clearly by the other institutions and in particular by the European Parliament, as you have obviously done, I'm thinking here, uh, given that you uh, quoted uh, Frank Elderson in relation to climate change and the protection of the environment. So if anything, it gives... Uh, the European Central Bank even more comfort that this secondary objective, for instance, but other secondary objectives as well, have to be uh, taken extremely seriously and without prejudice, of course, to the primary objective. So that, that's what I would say. 
I'm not going to, you know, pass judgment on uh, on on the past, and I'm sure that there are plenty of uh, ac academic work and political statements that will opine on the appropriateness, the timeliness of such measure or the other uh, at the time when uh, we passed the great financial crisis and and. Uh, um, and headed towards the European sovereign debt crisis. Nor would I pass judgment on, on you know, the methods adopted uh, by the Troika and the policy mix that was recommended at the time. I think that what is important is not to repeat policy mix or decisions that were eventually harmful or did not uh, meet with successful outcome. And I think that we should be guided by that as we, uh, we determine what policy is going forward uh, we want to apply. I just want to remind you of one particular point, is that we want uh, inflation to be sustainably at 2%. And to define that, we have clearly stated our forward guidance, which with the combined three conditions of being at target well before the end of the projection, at the end of the projection horizon, and with sufficient confidence that the progress realized in the short term are going to be conducive to this sustainable uh, inflation going forward. Those three components in and of themselves actually include an indication of the timetable that we have to deliver against. Thank you.